welcome back. So if you check through Amazon, there's quite a few mini PCs available. One of our favorite chipsets is the Intel N100. It gave us a good Windows experience and was great for emulation. But with its weak GPU and single channel memory, it has its limits. So GMK Tech got in touch with us and asked us if we'd like to review their i7 mini PC. This should blow the socks off the N100 at $299? Welcome to Team Pandora. Subscribe. So this arrived. As it was a loose bag and not packed in cardboard, the corners of the box have been squished in a bit. And you know, it's what's inside that counts. On the back of the box we have the company details, and the sticker showing us what's inside. And there it is. Intel Core i7 sticker, and very presentable. Ooh. It's a lot smaller than I expected. Pretty girls love it. So inside this piece of card here, get their manual. The manual shows basic instructions and specs. And for the Japanese release of this product, it's in English, Japanese, and Chinese. Tag. At the bottom of the box, we got two more boxes. This one here has a couple of cables. First one is a one meter HDMI cable and the other is a power cable for the power adapter. In the other box we have a VESA mount in case you want to attach the mini PC to the back of a monitor. We get a power adapter and a warranty card. Let's have a closer look. On the front we have two USB 3.2 ports and a very nice colored green power button. On the right side we have a nice set of vents. We also have some on the back too. This is where the air gets pushed out. There's also DC power HDMI port, audio jack, 2.5 gig Ethernet LAN, two more USBs, one more HDMI port, and a USB-C Type-C. Good for display port or data. On this side, more vents for cooling, and underneath, nothing much. Only the holes for mounting and this little sticker. It's about time for the size comparison. The Notebox M2 is around the same size as a B-Link Mini S and it's dwarfed by the Chewy N100. But when compared to the Alarkbox Pro, the M2 is four times the size. If you bring in the JMK Tech K2, it's only slightly smaller, but let's compare it to something that everybody owns, a Nintendo Game Boy, or maybe a Roy Bush T-Bag. Let's check the specs. This M2 has a quad core i7 processor with a max speed of five gigahertz. That is pretty good, but gaming will be very reliant on that GPU. When we first turn on our PC, we'll need to select our language. A few minutes later, you'll be in Windows. System information shows we have the i7 chip and it all looks good. If you're concerned about Windows activation, don't be. It is a legit version of Windows 11 Pro, and as soon as you go online, it will be activated. Just like my last visit to Utrecht. We have 956 two gigs free, but the first thing we should do is update Windows, and this works as expected. We can install the new drivers from Intel, followed by some free tools from Nenet.com. This website is highly recommended. So let's have a quick look at the benchmarks. The NVMe drive is pretty quick, easily enough for the average user. Apparently with desktop use, this is as strong as a nuclear submarine, but the gaming scores are a concern. According to Cinebench, in multi-core it's a hair behind the 7700K, but due to the 5 GHz boost, it excels in the single core benchmark. Here's some Geekbench 6. And finally, 3D Mark. As for the fan noise, the mini PC is silent and idle, and the fan turns on when it's needed. And here's how it sounds under load. But how is it to use? Well, for everyday tasks like web browsing or internet shopping, this computer has no issues whatsoever. We can do some shopping on AliExpress. I'm sure these cushions will make a nice present. Here's some 4K video on YouTube, and as this machine can do AV1 decoding, it works great. Checking out BoJack on Netflix, we had no problems at all. And if you're a university student and need office, piece of cake. We can make some graphics with Krita, or if you want to push the system a little bit, we can make some music. A digital audio workstation in general needs a decent CPU, and the 5 GHz boost in this i7 gives this mini PC ample power. But when it comes to something more GPU intensive, we may need some more juice. 
In Blender, the rain animation here is running at 16 FPS. And when editing videos in 1440p, we really need that extra grunt. In 1080p, we're a bit better off. We had no issues connecting our control to the Bluetooth, and everything seems hunky-dory. And I think it's about time for game testing. First up, Cuphead. Bit of King of Islands 13. But as this doesn't stress the video card, let's try King of Fighters 15. At 1080p we're only getting 30 FPS, but if we click it down to 720p, full speed. On low settings, 1080p, Fall Guys also gets 30 FPS. But if we click it down to 720p, we only get an extra 10 frames. Rocket League. CSGO. Fortnite. And Grand Theft Auto 5. The performance isn't terrible, but as it is, there's not much of an improvement over the N100 chip to give it a solid recommendation. Let's see if there's anything we can do to improve the performance. So here's the BIOS. We could change many of the settings, and what we're going to do is increase the power limit. This gives us a bit more juice if the mini PC needs it, and to counteract the possible raise in temperature, we'll adjust fan settings. We can now see it's using over 40 watts, and we're getting much better frames per second. But the CSGO experience is still quite lackluster. Let's have a quick look inside. To open this mini PC, all we need to do is take out four screws. Turn it over, and the bottom comes straight off. At the top we have the 1TB NVMe by Lexar, which is the same 610 Pro that we saw in the K2. There's a very thin copper graphene heatsink attached, which may be working as the drive sits around 60 degrees Celsius. Underneath that sits the Realtek combo module, which controls Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, but more interestingly is the single stick of DDR4. It's by Whoop is it? But more interestingly, this mini PC can support dual channel. So what we're gonna do is insert two sticks of crucial memory and see if we can get any more performance from this mini PC. Now that is looking better already. And it's nice to see we can add an M2 SATA drive if we need to. So now, with dual channel memory, we get a higher and much more stable frame rate. With this mini PC, we can also load up other operating systems, a favourite of ours being Badocera Linux. This one's specifically made to emulate a variety of other systems. We tested the beta of Badocera 38, and the Wi-Fi is working fine with this mini PC. But unfortunately, Bluetooth is not working yet, so we'll need to use a dongle for our controllers. So let's test out some games. First up, Death Smiles. Killer Instinct 2. And Tekken Tag Tournament. Is Jim Power and Amiga running full speed? There's some Grand Theft Auto on DOS. Nugan. Sega Rally Championship on the Sega Saturn. Right. Whoa. Over 
Dead or Alive 2, I want to take a Dreamcast. Bit of Capcom versus NZK2, I want to take an Naomi. That is look six on Sacred Thomas Wave. But if we really want to push it, it's on Sega Model 3. Moving on to some Sony systems now. Here's some PlayStation. PSP. And to one of the most difficult games to run, God of War, Chains of Olympus. We're at four times resolution, and it's running full speed. And it's even running full speed on the PlayStation 2. This is very nice to see. We did try some PlayStation 3, but it bugged out and crashed. Apparently there's an issue with the Intel GPU and this emulator. Here's N64. Ah! 3DS. Use the boots to take. I can use some help here, Fox. Oh man, I'm gonna have to back off. Nintendo GameCube. Nintendo Wii. And Wii U. Now let's finish it off with a bit of Xbox. The Charge. cavalry has arrived. I'm going after him. Let's go. Join me. Burn. Hit. Oh. That was me, my bad. Burn. Burn. Careful. Sorry. Burn. It's about time for the pros and the cons. The M2 is an i7 and a very nice price. It comes with Windows 11 Pro and it's a snappy emulation beast. Unfortunately, we expected a bit more from that Intel GPU. We hope the GMK Tech will start to ship these with two sticks of memory and hopefully get another NVMe slot. Then we can have faster storage or an external GPU. If you're looking for a new PC for your parents, then maybe the N100 variants are a better buy. But if you want to play a ton of emulation, including full speed PlayStation 2 and Xbox, you can't go wrong with the M2. While we play some Valorant, here's a big thank you to all of those on our Patreon. We really appreciate the support, we could not do this without you. Oh, I'll be fine. I have my massage parlor. Why won't you come for a back rub? I'm good, John, thanks. If you want to help support our work, please jump on. Or a simple like and subscribe would do us a solid. Anyway, this has been Nimi Chicken at Team Pandori, I'll catch you on the next one. Ta-ra!